Yeah, I'm losing my Scout edge. Futures, Pete, we've done a lot of work in recent days, weeks, and months. Honestly, you might say our greatest life's work um, giving people financial content is giving getting them comfortable with the idea of scalping futures. Right. Futures are, um, they, they're created so that their benefits, the cost effectiveness, they have lower margins than stocks and ETFs, uh, the lack of pattern day trading rules or, or short uh, selling regulations and all of that makes for a trade that the everyday trader, when you combine all those futures uh, benefits, Pete, with the futures of small, standard, and simple small right. exchange products, you've got something that the everyday trader can use to scalp. And we've done a lot of work uh, with mechanics and just defining what scalping is. If you don't know, please look at our other small stakes videos in our archive uh, here. But I, I want to today talk about the reason to do so. Um, I think this is a big part of it that you and I gloss over because it's it's kind of built into our our uh, our being, right? Where it's like you and I could look at the net change of uh, a couple of products and be like, oh man, that looks tasty. But I, I want to speak a little bit towards what we're looking at specifically when we're finding reasons to scalp futures. Before we do that, I want to give a little bit of a summary of our recent segments on mechanics and actually lend them to today's market, which is a stock market. Uh, if you're trading SM75, that is just building a new high after new high, uh, a market there in SM75 that usually moves about a percentage point per day, I think is higher today by almost three percentage points after new highs yesterday and uh, the end of 2020. And you know that could be troublesome for some people, Pete. Uh, a lot of people, uh, who take short positions or contrarian positions and then just let them go and have loose mechanics. Right. Every day when you check that screen and you get frustrated or every night when you go to sleep and you're like, man, I, I, I'm getting a little worried about this position. I hope tomorrow's the day that it reverses. We don't want that, right? We don't want that hope. We don't want that anger at a market because it's moving in the same direction. And how do we get rid of that? We get rid of that with tight mechanics, right? Right. Absolutely. And I think the key word there is, well, hope is always a great world in everything except trading. Uh, once hope comes into play, hope means mechanics have completely disappeared. And uh, you, you are, you, you're, you, you're devoid of strategy, or mm -hmm. your mechanics are not aligned with your strategy. So absolutely, Frank, the mechanics, if we're, if we're scalping futures, and we do, we've spent a lot of time, not only doing it, but teaching it and talking about it. The mechanics around management are critically important because you, you're, you've you been, you mentioned what every trader has gone through at some point is, geez, yeah. I just hope they trade lower at some point for a scratch. And it, all those words coming out of your mouth, don't feel you're alone in the woods. Everybody has said those things. It's what we do about that experience afterwards that will determine how we, how we survive and, and thrive. Yeah, absolutely. Because on a day like today, a week like this week, Pete, first week of 2021, there is a ton of stuff to do. And there's been a, a bunch of uh, trades that we've been on the right side of. You know, we talked about long interest rates, a big move higher. We talked about short metals, big move lower today. Yeah. But it's not to say that we're perfect because we're not, because we talked about short stocks, Pete. Right. And we I got are wrong. SF 75 against. Uh, the log small stands, yeah. And and we're we're wrong completely. But here's the thing, Pete, is that when you have those two winners and one loser, and you put that into this table and you crunch these numbers, it's like, oh wow, that's a success rate of 66% there. Right. I'm two out of three this week. But here's the problem. If I took a hundred dollar gain in my S10Y position, which was there this week, if I took a hundred dollar gain in my SPRE position which was there this week. And then I took a $300 loser in SM75. Right. I, I gave away everything. I'm actually right. at a loss for this week, even though I have a 66% win rate. So we covered all of this. Go look at this segment in our archives for even more. But I just wanted to highlight the fact that today is a frustrating day. And we're not trying to, to hide from the fact that stocks are just continuing through those highs. And we were wrong about being short stocks. But if we took a hundred dollar gain, Pete, in interest rates, a hundred dollar gain in metals, then we should only be taking a hundred dollar loss in stocks, and that means that on the week, great, I'm actually up one unit. I'm up a hundred dollars here, 
And guess what? Now I can go back in and I can sell stocks again, right? right? Like right. I'm not waking up angry. I'm not going to sleep, sleep distraught. I love that you brought up hope is great everywhere except for trading. I'll watch Star Wars until the TV burns out, okay? I love hope, but it's no place for your trading. And with that being said, let's find uh, some reasons to speculate. Sorry, go ahead. You want to talk Star Wars no, for a little let's, bit? Let's go. Uh, may the force be with you, Franklin. <laughs> I watched actually episode one and two this week, and um, they're pretty bad. Oh and my God. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson, the though. Old, the old classics, four or five. I already, I watched them. I, I watched them, man. But, but Samuel L. Jackson is good. Yoda is is always fun. Anakin Skywalker. Right. I mean, how did they not see that coming? That guy's a real jerk, if you ask me. <laughs> um, but anyways, let's get back to the the trading. You know, where do you find these reasons? And we don't jump on here, uh, put our ugly mugs in front of you to give you, oh, you should buy here or you should sell here. Absolutely not. We, as Pete likes to say, we're not selling a system. What we are trying to do is give you products that fit the everyday trader. Check. We've already done that with these small exchange products. And then also give you just the tools for like, what am I looking for? When okay. does an interesting scalp come in? For me, it's stats. It's stat driven. And when I'm talking about stats, I'm talking about, all right, if I'm if I'm scalping intraday, I'm day trading these markets. Well, what have they shown me the last handful of days? And this right here is the standard deviation for SM75. Okay. In the last handful of days, one standard, 68% of the time, it's within 80 cents. 95% of the time, a buck 60. And then those outliers, two, two and a half dollars. Where am I looking, Pete? I'm looking right outside of that 80 cents. That's when stuff right. starts to get intriguing, right? Absolutely, Frank. And th there's the start of our statistical edge, our probability edge with static deltas. We know about probabilities with options on, on futures, but here is a way to attach probabilities and move that 50-50 uh, fact and you know that 50 50 fact slightly in our favor, but it, it, for textbook examples today, um, where we like to be between 80 and 90 cents on the scalp, absolutely. Um, where we would have been wrong is between 80 and 90 cents if we look at yesterday's action and today's action. That's where we go back to, and it's you know, uh, not a curve fitting exercise, but uh, today's or yesterday's action speak directly to mechanics in, you know what? And I, I love the fact because, because you look at 68% of the time and you think, wow, we, you guys have moved the ball dramatically for 50, 50. Absolutely. But we're mindful that that 32% exists. Sure. We can't ignore it. And that's where mechanics and management. And, and that's, I'm glad you bring that up. Cause yeah, you're totally right. We're looking at SM 75 and the numbers here for one standard deviation. And people would say to me, Hey, I've traded this thing three days this week and it's blown out that one standard deviation right. every day. That's true. It doesn't work all the time. And 32% of the time, it does close outside of that range. Right. But that 32% of the time, I'm taking those, I'm managing those losses and I'm making sure that I'm taking the same amount of losses as I am profits. Because right. guess what? This happened, the movement outside of that 68% happened in interest rates. It happened in dollars. Right. It happened in gold and silver, our metals product. And it came back. And, and that's where it's like, all right, I got two or three winners over here and I've got one or two losers over here. And as long as I manage, I'm uh, I'm looking pretty good. But yeah, that's what signals to me is statistics. But that being said, Pete, I have no problem with, uh, and, and this isn't like a signal to buy or sell, but just more of a, a signal to, oh, there's opportunity to be, to be had in this market. I have no problem with that being opinion-based either, right? Like a lot of people would say, hey, I'm going into the market here on January 4th to trade because markets are moving around or on January 6th today because there was an election last night. And I'm just, uh, my opinion is telling me that there's a, there's opportunity in there as well. There's nothing wrong with that, right? No, and that's 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 a powerful piece. Everyone's going to have strategies, and they're going to be unique to you, and that's great. And you know, the strategies are we we, we speak to strategies and biases every day. Doesn't mm -hmm. mean that they have to be yours. Uh, you know, I think that's the wonderful and really infinite way you can express an opinion and find opportunities and futures. It is the mechanics and management piece that we will keep coming back to, and they are relatively uniform, and mm. they have to be 
they're individual in terms of what's comfortable, but they need to be implemented on a uniform basis. And that's, and, and that's a key piece. We, you know, we're not buying every break. We're not selling every rally. We're sometimes using a, a, a statistical bias, an inferred bias. Uh, yeah, any one of those works and they can be part of a productive set of occurrences sure. if they're not, if you don't let, and there, there is a little bit of a, you know, I think when you have a bias, you tend to don't want to attach mechanics to it ahead of time, like we talk about, because it's like, well, I really believe in this. Well, you know what? Believe in what the market tells you. You know, they will either validate your your yeah. your inclination, your your bias, and you you can't argue with. I, and you and I have talked about this before. We've seen guys argue with the screen. Sure. Um, the classic is breaking the mouse. I always love that one. It's the guys yeah. who broke the mouse because then they were. Well, how do you how do you close the positions? The office looking yeah. for another mouse. Yes. Yeah. No. Yeah. That was the bad. Yeah. The guy. The guy who every every month someone ran into the board of trade offices because they their home setup broke. And it's like, oh, it broke on, on the most volatile night of the right. last month. It broke. Another um, wardrobe no, we, function. Yes. Me mechanics take all of that out of it. And yeah, whether your opinions or statistics based in terms of getting you know the signal for opportunity. And then on top of that, are you a trend follower or a contrarian? I love the fact that this is a world where both can win. Right. This this isn't the Empire versus the 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 Republic, right? It's not Jedi's <laughs> versus the Sith Lords. It's literally like they both can win. It's just a matter of if you're a Jedi, be a Jedi. You're not a Jedi on t Monday and Tuesday and then Sith on, on, on uh, Thursday and Friday. No crossing streams here. Consistency with mechanics and consistency with ideas because this is where you get turned around. I know I'm making right. jokes, but this is where you get turned around, right, right Pete, where it's like, oh, I'm a contrarian this week. Next week, I'm a trend follower. And it's like if you thought you found an edge in an asset class in a way to trade that asset class, don't turn yourself around. It's, it, I always come, you know, I love sports analogies, but it's like, if I've been taking underdogs all season and it's, it's, wow, it's underperforming what I thought it was going to do, but I've shown with my modeling and with my research that underdogs should pay out at some point. Right. The last thing you do is then go, Oh, I'm flipping. I'm going actually now with the favorites. Uh, be consistent with your system, your strategy, right. as long as, of course, you want to make sure, first of all, that it works and that your research works and you actually do have a good edge. But then it's just a consistency for trend followers or contrarians. Absolutely. And and that's, and I, I think the uh, I'm a trend follower one day, I'm a, uh, I'm a contrarian the next, is the trying to get too clever. I found yeah. something that works. Now I'm going to I'm going to trade the other side because I'm that clever. And when you tend to do that, it's not because you have a, a statistical edge or a bias. It's usually against your bias, which creates the conflict right there. So um, sure. I, I think you really need to be mindful of uh, explore new strategies, but build on consistency. You're absolutely right. Yeah, and and this is really all there is to it. I know that a lot of people go to. Uh, you know, they pay people for uh, these different systems or to be their uh, mentor or whatever for trading. Um, and, and they're looking for some golden strategy. No, to me, when it comes to scalping futures, it's always like, all right, I need something so that when I open my platform or I open my Twitter or whatever, I know that there's opportunity somewhere. Then when I go and search it out, I, I then commit my opinions and my strategy to that market that has signaled opportunity. Right. And then after that, the last piece is always mechanics. How do they fit your style? How do they fit your account? If you're trading, you know, big E-mini S&P contracts or NASDAQ or the big bond contracts or gold or crude oil, and you're saying, I'm looking for $20, that's not going to fit, okay? Those markets move $20 before you even blink. Um, yeah. But with small exchange markets, thankfully, you can get it down to a small size or you can scale it up to a large size. Just find what fits you right. and that strategy and then just be consistent with it. You know, like we were talking about, if you're taking $25 scalping the smalls, don't start losing fifty and a hundred dollars scalping the smalls unless you have a strategy that wins seventy or eighty or ninety percent right. of the time. This is the last piece. You got all your reasons. You've got your different trend following, contrarian, and my strategy behind it. And then the mechanics. It's the most boring part, but it's the most. Uh, it's the most essential.